If you have your Bible, or you got your Bible app on your phone, uh, find the book of Proverbs chapter 4. It's right about in the middle of the Bible, Proverbs chapter 4. And we have been in a series called Wheel of Fortune. All right, Wheel of Fortune. If, if you're new with us, you're jumping in uh, in the fifth part, and, uh, and that's fine. This, these messages do stand alone because they're, there's a different subject each week. Uh, nevertheless, I want to remind everyone that the reason I'm teaching this series is because I was impressed inwardly with this, uh, this approach, this concept that our finances in God's kingdom are multifaceted. And, and if, we, we were, if we were to just do a series on giving, uh, that would be good, or a series on faith, or a series on receiving, all that would be good. But this, I was moved more to hit it as an overview. Do a giving week, do a faith week, do a, a receiving week, do a prosper week, you know, and, and hit multi, multiple parts of the big picture, all right? Um, that's where the wheel came from and the different uh, uh, subject matters. Um, but I would say this, uh, because I know nowadays, at least cultural trends say most people don't go to church uh, every week. And uh, I know that's not the same for all of you, but some of you that is true. Um, with this particular series, you're missing the point if you don't hit them all. You really are. Um, and it's hard for me as a pastor to move the church uni in a unified direction when people aren't, aren't there repeatedly. And I know there's sometimes there's things maybe you can't avoid, but if you have missed any of the former parts, at least, at minimum, go get them on the website and watch them, listen to them maybe multiple times. Hear the things that preceded today, all right? And then, uh, and then today, we're going to get into another one. Um, and you may be very strong in some of these. You may be a real strong in this, in this message today, but you might not be. You might be the, you know, the, the enemy might be eating your financial lunch because of having some real holes in your belief system, in your understanding of God's plan. That's why we want to hear the whole thing. Uh, recently, a friend uh, of mine sent a picture. He was at a restaurant, had some friends there, a husband and wife, and he took a picture uh, that he sent to me, and it showed them, and in front of them was this amazing dessert that I have per firsthand experience with. Uh, it's called a Belgian hot fudge sundae. And, but there was two people and one dessert. <laughs> I, I messaged him back. I said, you, you tell them they're not allowed to do it that way. That is one per person. Otherwise, they do not get the full experience. And, uh, and that's what I'm looking for in this message. Everyone has to have the full experience. And then you'll know what it's all about. Everybody ready? All right, let's, we, we have our own wheel of fortune, so let's spin it and see where we land. <laughs> All right, today... We are going to speak to you about wisdom in finances. So Proverbs chapter 4, and notice with me in verse 7, 4 and verse 7, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and in all you're getting, get understanding. Now, now you might think that we would read a get money scripture, <laughs> <laughs> when we're talking about finances. But no, no, not get money. There's nothing wrong with getting money, but that's not the principal thing. That's not, in all you're getting, make sure you get some cash. No, in all you're getting, get understanding. Wisdom comes first. In fact, you'll, if we were to milk that subject a great deal, you'll find that wisdom and riches are connected. They go hand in hand, and long life is all connected to wisdom. So what we want to do is get wisdom, not get money. 
knowing that really having a sufficient supply of finances in our lives is very much connected to having a sufficient supply of wisdom. Everybody okay? And so wisdom then is knowing what to do. Knowing what to do is different than just knowledge. It has to do with the future. Going forward, making decisions, if I have wisdom, um, then I'll make right choices. Uh, you know, in the scripture, uh, in the new covenant, it speaks about the word of wisdom. Well, what is a word of wisdom? Well, that's when, a, when we receive a word from God that basically tells us what's going to happen or what he wants us to do. It has to deal with the future. Wisdom, then, is the application of knowledge, but it, it's, it's knowing what to do with what we have. The opposite of wisdom, what would that be? Foolishness. I don't think anyone in here wants to be a fool, right? But you're either a wise person or a foolish person, and we want to avoid being foolish with our finances. And I think that one big part of God's blessing on us, if we are blessed of the Lord, then we are, uh, we are going to see things clearly. We are going to know this is a bad choice. This is a smart move over here. We are going to have better clarity of business decisions, of personal finance choices. That is a result of God's blessing, or you can say his wisdom is in operation. Now, a person can be fully engaged in God's laws of giving and receiving, seed time and harvest. We've taught on that already. But with the absence of wisdom, how many know foolishness can eat up your harvest? Poor decisions, poor money management can totally eat up the blessing of God. And we want to avoid letting bad decisions take away God's blessing. Someone said, I'm tithing, and I don't understand why everything's not working. Well, again, it might be some other factor, not the giving factor. Yeah. Okay? And so uh, some of what, what comes to us is designed for reinvestment or giving again. In other words, the scriptures define that God gives us seed and he gives us bread. All right? And the word seed is designed, it has the express stamp on it. It's earmarked for giving. Some of what comes to me is designed to go through me and to be given away. While as other parts are designed, other money I get is designed for me to use. I need to have the discernment, the recognition, what goes back to God and what, it, what should be up to me. In other words, it is my choice. I can do whatever I want with it. Nevertheless, I do want to avoid foolishness. I want to use the wisdom of God in all my decisions. If God speaks to you, well, then that's what it is. Then it turns into seed. If he tells you to give something, but otherwise, it's bread. I just want to be wise with it, okay? And so I want to give some real practical things, but it basically is based on what eats our finances. What takes it away? How does the thief steal from us? And so I want you to look at 1 Timothy, if you would. Take a big, fat right turn, sharp corner. 1 Timothy chapter 4, way towards the back of the book, if you're not familiar with where it is. 1 Timothy chapter 4, and notice verse 8. 4 verse 8. It reads, for bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Notice what is profitable. He said, godliness is profitable. Everybody say that with me. Godliness is profitable. In, in how many things? In, in everything. When? In all times. Now and in eternity. But if I will do my, live my life in a godly way, I will profit. It will benefit me. Will it benefit my finances? 
Huge. And this is where we need to see the correlation that, that my uh, financial success in life is not solely tied to um, giving or faith or receiving or work or, or some of these other aspects. It is also tied to godliness. If I live my life in an ungodly way, meaning immoral, I lack integrity, it's going to eat away at my finances, all right? And how many know you can't really pray that away? I'm struggling in my finances. Could you got, could, you, could everybody pray for me? Uh, sure, happy to pray for you, but one of the things I'm gonna pray is you stop acting like a fool. That's, I said that kind of strong, didn't I? Because <laughs> foolish decisions will override and undo a good, strong prayer. Because if I'm praying to God to help me financially, he, in part of the answer is going to be stop doing these things that keep eating it up. Okay, uh, think about it in real practical terms and, and understand my heart in saying some of these and giving these examples. I know we all have a past, all right? And in Christ, we don't have a past, right? But, but, uh, but I understand people have made wrong choices. I've made bad decisions in my life. Everyone has. This is not designed to condemn or to make anyone feel bad or, or throw other hands in the air. I give up because I've made too many poor decisions and now I'm just gonna be stuck in the poor house the rest of my life, okay? I'm looking at going forward. Amen. Where are we right now? What does wisdom say I do moving ahead, all right? But you think about some of the directions, the instructions of righteousness that we have. Uh, for example, marriage. All right, how many understand that a failed marriage can cost you big time? <laughs> Financially, right? And so the reason for the Lord wanting to keep your marriage, if you're married, wanting to keep it strong is for a, a number of reasons, but one of them is he doesn't want you to go broken. He wants you to keep your whole paycheck. <laughs> right? Say, so what if I'm faithfully giving to the Lord? Good, but you're still going to send half of it away. If you don't succeed in that arena of life. And so this is how we can't separate all, all of this. In fact, um, you know, having kids out of wedlock can be a great financial burden. And many struggle. And again, I'm looking at going forward, but uh, some have done, have run the numbers, and, and, and it, it appears that in our country, if a person will simply do a few things in order, they are almost guaranteed to not be below poverty, below the poverty line. Few things like finish high school, then get married, meaning in that order. Then have children. If you only did those three things in life, there is only a tiny percentage of people that will ever be poor in our country. Isn't that amazing? Just doing them in order. It just tells me God is really smart. I should kind of pay attention to his, his system. His way of doing things. And if that's blown in your life, say, oh, I messed that one up. There's forgiveness, there's love, and God will help you going forward. Look to him. But for those who, you know, can still, can still make some good decisions, that's why we're talking. Everybody okay? You know, what about gambling? Uh, gambling is a good way to the poor house. And, I, I, you know, for those who become addicted to it and have a problem, they will eat up their life savings often in that. And, and sometimes when you, when, you, when you speak about or mention gambling, people will say, I looked for that word in the Bible and I didn't even see it there. Uh, who says the Lord's against gambling? Well, you know, I haven't found the verse that says to not drink poison. <laughs> and there are some things I don't think I need a verse for. If I do a word search, there are some, some things I'm not going to find in there, but I understand the big picture. I have a, the Spirit of God inside of me, the wisdom of God leading me in what I should do. And, 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 and can I tell you, you can, look for the, you can look for lottery in the Scripture, and you're not going to find that word either. 
Does that mean you should do it? <laughs> I always know that bugs a few people. <laughs> the wisdom of God will help us tremendously. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> what about, here's a real practical one. It's called buying things you cannot afford. And the reason sometimes people trip up with that, because we, we have focused often on the promises, on God's amazing blessings. He's an abundant God that runs the cup over. He makes too many fish and too many loaves, and, and uh, there's always leftovers, and he's an abundant, extravagant God whose streets are made of gold. God wants us to have nice stuff. You know what? I fully agree with that, but not if you can't afford it. <laughs> that doesn't mean he wants us to swipe the card and get it. That doesn't mean he wants us to have stuff at any cost. No, there's a right way and a wrong way to get natural blessings. So as I was thinking about us buying things that we couldn't afford, I remembered uh, an old video that I thought would explain it well. Here you go. I know it's one thing to understand that. It's another thing to live that way. And uh, we live in a culture that we've been trained in. And listen, if we don't get a hold on our spending and the immediate gratification of, you know, 82 easy payments, just sign right here and you can have it today. Well, we're going to be on the wrong side of things. You know, I, I'm not implying that there would never be a time to take out a loan for a house or, you know, some big things. But what, what happens is a lot of times we're borrowing money, whether it's on cards, cards or whatever, for stuff that we shouldn't be doing, we shouldn't be borrowing on. And it's all about, I can have it now. No, you can't. You don't have the money. <laughs> and if that principle would simply rule our lives or, or delay some of our, our purchases, it would save us tremendously. You know, rash decision-making is one of, the, one of the killers, all right? When we, we have to, you have to get it now. It's the last one. If I don't get it right now, you're gonna lose it. Well, that's great on the salesman side and for all of you, you know, way to go. Uh, <laughs> but on the purchaser side, I don't wanna make a decision right now if it's a big thing. And if it's the last one, then listen, I'm, I have a relationship with God. I'm gonna trust him. I'm gonna get it later or another one or a better one or an upgraded one. Something else is gonna happen. But if I'm kind of pressured into force into making a quick decision, that's usually when we pay top dollar, right? It's usually when we don't get any kind of deal. Uh, but, but again, I'm just thinking about living godly, all right? Godliness is profitable. So how would God handle this? What's the godly way of, of doing it? You think about lawlessness or breaking the law. How many know that can take your finances? Has anybody ever had a speeding ticket? You know, or worse, or something else, and all of a sudden, ka-ching, there goes your, there goes your money, got my paycheck, and now I'm handing it over, wish I would have drove the speed limit, or something, or sometimes, you know, worse things like that, but it's called tickets and fines and penalties, and uh, those are the things that if we'll live godly, we can avoid that, okay? Uh, even so some of you have experience with like overdraft fees, writing checks, and there's no money in the account when the check comes through. And it is amazing how much money can be lost with things like that. I remember speaking to a banker. This was quite a few years ago, so I don't know where it stands now. But I was asking, I, I was asking him, hey, I said, where do you guys make most of your money? You know, what's most of the bank's income? And I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, is it from loans or is it from these fees and these different types of things? And he told me back then it was, uh, it was like half and half for them. Half of their income was coming from people who really couldn't afford it because they're bouncing checks and ching, 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 ching. All these fees are coming in. How many know you do that for a few months? Yikes. There's a new car right there. <laughs> and so... Wise decisions. We, you cannot override practical wisdom with a prayer of faith. Following the Spirit of God, He will lead you to not sign that check. Well, I was going to get money in the bank before they got there. Because I'm going to write you the check. I'm going to get the motorcycle today. And then I'm going to go see Uncle Louie. He's going to cover. Man, I'm going to run down to the... <laughs> 
no, no, stop it. <laughs> Godliness. What about bad habits? Again, this is not for condemnation, but how many know smoking cigarettes can cost, cost a lot of people uh, thousands of per year? They're expensive. And people, I mean, not talking about the health factor or anything like that, just the financial factor. When people get addicted to the, these kind of things, it can cost you thousands. Where, what, where, where could that money go? Build that up of over a few years and add 2,000, 2,000, 2,000, 2,000. Do that for a few years. Man, that's a bunch of money, isn't it? Someone said, well, I got a problem. I'd like to quit, but I, well, that's why we have prayer teams here. That's why we have healing services. We have prayer teams after the service, the healing teams up here. They'll pray for you. God will help you and break that addiction in your life. And it'll help you in many areas, including in your wallet. Everybody okay? Even, now, now I'm not putting this in the same category, even though I like to do it for fun. But nowadays, coffee's a big thing. Right, especially as coffees, Dutch Bros, and all that kind of stuff, and uh, and I don't have any problem if someone spends five, six, seven dollars every day on a cup of uh, these fancy coffees, if you can afford it. <laughs> the problem is sometimes people are struggling to with the regular parts of their life, and yet ka-ching, 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 and you add that up, that comes to thousands per year when you're doing that every day. And so sometimes it's just a matter of making right decisions. It's not a matter of right or wrong. But, you know, credit card balances and paying interest month after month after year after year. Uh, you know, sometimes I'll see individuals, they'll, they, they, get a, they find a new house. They want to get a bigger house, a better house, a nicer house. And they found one and everything that was where they were living was, you know, too expensive. So they get one out in Timbuk three. And they say, we got this house, and it is awesome, and it's cheaper than the one before, and it's bigger, and, uh, and that's fine. I don't have any problem with that, but, but where's your job? Yeah. Well, it's 30 miles away. Where are the kids going to school? You know, all these other factors, and it's like, you made your decision with too small of information. Did you even add up the fuel cost? let alone the commute time and all these other factors. And it's that wisdom from God that we need to say, you know, I literally like the house, I like the yard, I love it, but that's gonna cost us more than we realize if we do that. It's the wisdom of God that we need. You remember the story of the parable of the prodigal son? Jesus told the story about the two brothers and, and the younger son said, dad, inheritance, and they both got their inheritance. And after a few days, the younger son took off, took all the money, and he went off. And, and it's in Luke 15, 13. And it says that he, basically he went off into riotous living or prodigal living. It says, and, and not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. Okay, here's what we need to avoid if we're going to prosper in God's kingdom. Avoid wasting our possessions, okay? Uh, what that word mean, means is other translations say riotous living or wastefully extravagant. Wastefully extravagant. How many people uh, get money, whether it's a, regu a regular paycheck or whether it's some kind of special money that came to you, and as soon as you get the extra money, it's gone. Or as soon as you get your regular money, that weekend is great, <laughs> And then struggle until the next paycheck comes. Live above what you're able to handle and then barely make it through. Everybody okay? Wastefully extravagant. That's what we want to avoid. Amen. So many times people who struggle financially are simply making regularly poor financial decisions. And if we can wipe those out, Man, changes everything. Let me read a couple verses to you. Proverbs 21. Proverbs 21 and verse 20. This is the New Living Translation. It reads, the wise have wealth and luxury. Can you see why wisdom is kind of important? <laughs> the wise have wealth and luxury, but fools spend whatever they get. I, I, I know a, a, a family uh, recently they came into through 
uh, some inheritance type of money. They came into some extra money. It wasn't, you know, an ex- a huge amount, but, you know, thousands extra money. And, you know, they were struggling and, and you know, just making it, but, but barely. And, and they got all this extra money. And uh, instead of paying off some of the things they owed, instead of wiping out this credit card bill, instead of paying off this vehicle, that kind of stuff, well, the money just disappears, Meaning they spend it, they, they go out, they all of a sudden going out to fancy restaurants or they take a vacation or something like that. And it's like, you wanna, I wanna wring people's neck. Oh, I love them, you know, but I wanna wring their neck. I wanna do it in a nice way. <laughs> but it's like, serious, think about your future. Well, that's the first time I had to take a vacation and I finally had the money to do it. No, you didn't have the money. Everybody Okay. <laughs> This is one of those things, if, if you are one who borrows to take vacations, I want to encourage you to stop. I like vacations, you like them, we all need a break sometimes, and ni- you know, expensive vacations are nicer than cheap vacations. <laughs> Some of you like to camp. I like to camp in a hotel. <laughs> uh, but w- One thing, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, one thing people can do, though, is uh, pay for your vacation up front, meaning you might be saving for it for a year instead of putting it on the credit card and paying for it for five years, making minimum payments. Well, we just needed to go, we needed to take a vacation. Get a tent, dude, and <laughs> camp. <laughs> Something that's cheap until the money is there in advance. Amen. We cannot act like three-year-olds when it comes to our finances. Hallelujah. Did I read this verse? I did. The the wise have wealth and luxury, but fools spend whatever they get. Here's the principle. Uh, If I'm not going to be foolish, I, I can see how a wise person thinks and how a foolish person thinks. The foolish person gets money and it's gone. They spend it. The wise person says, I've received money. I'm taking at least a portion of that and I'm setting it aside. I am not going to allow myself to spend it all. For whatever reason, I had this thought when I was just starting adult life. Uh, I was single, and I didn't m- make very much money. But I had this thought, must be the grace of God. But I just decided, I'm going to make my zero in my checking account to be 1000 now, I wasn't, I wasn't, it wasn't some type of emergency fund. I didn't think about it that way. I didn't use that kind of ter- terminology. I just decided I never want to take the risk of going under. And, you know, if something needs to be fixed on my car or something like that, there's always going to be a buffer zone there. So I made my zero 1,000. When it got to 1,000, I thought of that as zero stop spending money unless there was something that absolutely required it. And then I'd build it back up. I think that's wisdom when I see, I see the scriptures and I see how the, how the wise person handles their finances and how a fool does. Fool takes it all the way down to zero every time. Oh, I know that was hard to say. <laughs> Don't be condemned by it. Say, okay, I'm going to start changing the way I think. I'm going to start changing the way I think. And over the next little while... I'm going to do things different. Let me read to you another passage. It's uh, from Proverbs 6. You can look at it with me or you can look at it on the screen. It's from the New Living as well. Proverbs 6, verse 6 reads, Take take a lesson from the ants, you lazy bones. (laughs) Learn from their ways and become wise. Though they have no prince or governor or ruler to make them work, they labor hard all summer gathering food for the winter. But you lazy bones, how long will you sleep? When will you wake up? A little extra sleep, a little more slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. Then poverty will pounce on you like a bandit. Scarcity will attack you like an armed robber. Listen for the wisdom of God in this. Just watch how the ants do it. (laughs) In other words, what do they think about? The future. They're preparing for winter. What should we think about? 
We should not just be preparing for today. Let's also think about tomorrow. And sometimes there's a storing up that's needed. Sometimes there's a setting aside that is necessary. It is, it is wise to live this way. Proverbs 21 and verse 5. 21 5 reads, the plans of the diligent lead surely to plenty. Everybody say plans. plans. But those of everyone who is hasty, surely to poverty. The one who's just reactionary, they're just responding quick, they're just taking things as they come. Poverty. The wise person, they're diligent and they plan things out in advance. I, I like the idea of, of diverting money and we can do that easily nowadays by setting up separate bank accounts and you can divert money. Whenever money hits this account, 10% goes over here, 5% goes over here and it goes out of your main checking account. Does anybody think that way? Many of us do that with giving, of course. We start with the tithe and then give on top of that. Uh, but we do that with giving and we do it first so we don't spend it don't spend what we've given to the Lord on something else. But you can do that with cars, with vacations, with other things, or just say, hey, a year from now, I'm gonna wanna take a vacation, and I'm either gonna put it on the card, or I'm gonna say, hey, between now and then, back it up, how many weeks, how many months, I need this much per month, and I'm gonna divert it out of my account. And then in all of this, we're giving and receiving and trusting God, and he's multiplying our seed sown, and so everything is being blessed. A savings account might be called a storehouse in the scripture. And, the, and, he, and he says he will bless our storehouse. Well, what if we don't have one? Nothing to bless. And I say savings, I say that loosely. It could be an investment, could be uh, in some kind of mutual fund. It could be in some, some other type of thing, but it's something that you're not spending. The plans of the diligent lead to plenty. Make a plan. And next month, next year, five years, 10 years, you'll have plenty. You'll have an abundance. I think wisdom says to handle our finances these three ways. Number one is we give. First and foremost, God first, kingdom first. Number one, you give before you write any check for yourself or any cash, any many bills, give. Number two is save. Save or invest. Whatever that percentage might be for you, 5%, 10%, I don't know, maybe more, uh, you know, uh, if, if, if you're a, a teenager, you don't have a whole lot of bills, you know, how about 80%? Spend, you know, give, give 10, spend 10, and save the rest. I guarantee you, you'll want it in the future. And if you do it, you'll be glad you have it. Just a thought. And number three is we spend. But if we'll do things in that order, we give, we save, we spend, then we are making a diligent plan for the future. Am I limited to what I can figure out on the calculator? Absolutely not. I want to trust God going forward and believe him to multiply everything I'm doing and bless it beyond my wildest dreams. But in the meantime, I need to be wise with what I do. Amen. Amen. I don't, there's so much we could talk about here. But uh, I tell you, if we learn to be led of the spirit, you know, there was a man of God years ago who, who had, a, had a vision the Lord appeared to him, and he said, I'm going to teach you how to be led by my spirit. The Lord Jesus said that to him. And, uh, and one of the things the Lord said to him in the middle of that is Jesus said to him, if you will learn how to be led by my spirit, I'll make you rich. And this man was like shocked by that. He thought, well, is that the way the Lord thinks? And he questioned him on it. And the, and, and, and the Lord said, listen, I'm not opposed to my people being rich. I'm opposed to them being covetous. And I thought, well, that sure agrees with Scripture. And if we will take time and say, Lord, teach me to be led. And part of that leading is simply wisdom. But it's wisdom and being led by his spirit. I tell you, we can go up from here.